for his Lord. Thank God for that change that God brought about in our life. A wonderful change. That only Jesus can bring about. I've seen many times, including myself, we talk about changing, changing our life, changing things in our life. And boy, do we fail. We plan it, we prepare it, and then we implement it for about a week or two, and then we let it go. <laughs> but I'm glad tonight that when God brings about a change in a person's life, it's not a temporary thing. He really transforms us. And the reason for that is because His transformation takes place on the inside, in the heart. You know, he works from the inside out, and so, you know, his, when he changes us, he, he, he really does a wonderful work, and <laughs> we just thank God for that, amen? Tonight, I want to read to you from the book of Jeremiah, and um, we'll read chapter 17, Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 9 and 10, but before we do that, and I'm getting calmed down after the worship here for a little bit, uh, we want to pray. And, uh, and we're going to pray for um, the service. We also want to pray for uh, Jesse's daughter, uh, Taryn. If I mess your name up, <laughs> please forgive me. <laughs> if you, have, if you hear, ever hear this and, I, and you hear the way I pronounce your name, if it's wrong, please forgive me. <laughs> but uh, we'll, we'll give it a try anyways. But what I want to ask is that we all stand and we will pray together. She, she, uh, um, they ask for prayer, and so... God knows the situation, and He knows what all needs to be done, and so we will pray and put it in the hand of God. But while we're here standing in the house of the Lord, those of you that um, want to join in in prayer also online, I don't know who all is there, but whoever wants to join in in prayer, and we can set aside this time of, of respect and stand together right where you are, you know, in your living room. Now, if you're driving, don't stand. <laughs> You know, but if you can, if you can, we'll stand in honor to God. And we'll pray together as believers. And we'll just um, put, put it in the hand of God and, and let God do what God does best. He is a miracle worker. He is the great physician. Yes, God does use people. He works through people. So he will work through doctors. He will work through nurses. He will work through pediatrician, firefighters, police officers. He uses us, he uses people, but in the end, he's still the one that does the healing. He's still the one that does the miracle, but he will use people to do their part also. So let's stand, we'll pray and ask God for a miracle and ask God for his help and his healing so God can step in in the situation and guide everything to be right. And he will take the fear out of the heart of the individual and put faith in there, and he can do that. Father, tonight we come to you in prayer, all of us here in the house of the Lord and those that desire to pray, that join us online. We thank you, Lord God, that we can bring our prayer requests before you tonight. Lord, we're agreeing together and asking in your name, Jesus, for Taryn, that you will, by your mercy and grace, give her strength. Thank you for sparing her life and for helping her to have a good recovery. And now, Lord God, the surgery that is scheduled for tomorrow, we're praying for your grace and mercy to be with her, that you're you guide the hands of those that will be involved in it. You'll help them to do an excellent job. I pray, Father, for faith, that you will fill the hearts of the people with faith. And I pray, Lord God, you will take away fear and give peace in this time. Pray for a miracle of healing, that you will continue to heal this young lady, Lord, and continue to show yourself real to the family. Father, I pray and ask these things and for all that are joining us, we agree together, asking this in the name of Jesus. We ask it in your name, Lord. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. And just trust the Lord, okay? Faith, as I always share, is, is belief in God. Faith is, is, is not worrying. Faith is believing. When you pray and you ask God, just leave it in the hand of the Lord. And just thank Him afterwards. So how does faith work? Well, I just told you, right? Faith is you ask the Lord for what you want. You pray, make your prayer request before Him. And then you just thank Him. 
believe that he heard you, believe that he heard the prayer, and that he will answer it accordingly. And so tonight I want to read to you from uh, Jeremiah chapter 17, verses 9 through 10, and, and I hope you will take this message the right way, because it's really a positive message, but the Bible reading itself may seem very strong or very stern, but it's, it's really the truth of the scripture. In verse 9, he said, he's speaking about the heart. He said, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his doing. And so we want to use those two verses of Scripture, and I want to use especially verse 9, where he said, The heart is desperate, the heart is deceitful above all things, and desperately wicked. Who can know it? And with the help of the Lord tonight, I want to use that, and I want to talk about how God changed me. <laughs> and you can put your name in there also, because he's sharing to it us, what the condition of a person's heart is before they accept God into their life and what it can be after God comes in. And so I want to preach about He changed me. He changed me. God really, genuinely changed me from the inside out. And so tonight's message is really about giving praises and thanksgiving to God for His wonderful work of grace and salvation to all of us, whosoever it is that accept Jesus Christ into their heart, into their mind, or into their life, if there's one thing that will testify as we're, she was singing about it, I am changed, and I don't want to go back to what I used to be. He, I'm forgiven, I'm healed, I'm cleansed. All these things we testify because this is exactly what God did. And so the message tonight is about giving praise to God for this wonderful change that he brought about in our life. God is worthy of that praise tonight. Amen. Amen. And if you're not saved, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, he can come into your life and change. You just have to give him a chance. He loves you. He cares about you. He died on the cross for you. He spared your life. You can look back at your life many times and see, you know what, there have been so many times that uh, I could have been a goner a long time ago. In my personal life, I know that for a fact. I could have died many, many times, but by the grace of God, he, he spared my life and He gave me a chance to live and brought me to a place where I can, with a reasonable mind, understand His love for me and understand His grace in my life. And when I got to that place and I, I gave my life to Jesus, I believed that He died for me on the cross and I believed that He rose again from the dead. It was a fact recording history and when I allow myself to believe this gospel God opened my heart and he placed faith in there to trust him and as I trust the Lord and and ask him to come into my life 1998 <laughs> about 20 something years ago I guess he really he really when when he came into my life he really genuinely changed me from the inside and so tonight I, I, I want to talk about how God changed me, how he really transformed my life from the inside out. And I want to give him praise and thanksgiving, and I trust that you will join me tonight also. If you are changed, if you are a Christian, you can chime in and say, Lord, thank you for changing my life. Amen. Because uh, as he shared here, the condition of the heart of a man before salvation, there's nothing good that is written about the heart, the life, the actions and when, when, when the Bible speaks of the heart, uh, he's not talking about the heart as we generally speak of it. A lot of times we talk about the heart, we point to our, our, ch our chest and we talk about that heart that beat and pumped the blood. And that's what we call the heart. But really, that's not what God speaks of when he talks about the heart. The heart he talks about is the one that we refer to when we say, well, someone really broke my heart. You know, that, that our emotion, the part that controls our emotions, our thoughts, uh, uh, our imaginations, our faith, our fear, all the, the, the things that goes along, the real us, our, our, our mind, that's what the heart is. 
And so when he speaks of the heart, he's talking about the seat of our intellect, the part that controls us, our innermost being, the one, the true us, right? And so he's saying that person before was deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. And so God showed us the condition of a heart of a sinner, a person who have never repented and given their life to Jesus Christ. He is describing our heart as being deceitful. And boy, we know that to be true. <laughs> we can lie about a lot of things. <laughs> we, can we can portray a lot of things. We can pretend a lot of things because our heart is designed to do that. You know, we can, from a very young child, we learn how to lie. You know, but how to teach us how to lie. We knew how to lie. We know how to deceive. We know how to put on a front, if you will. Nobody had to teach us these things because it was a natural byproduct of a unconverted heart. We were just living out what our heart is. And so that's who we were. He said in, in, in verse 9, he described the unconverted heart this way. He said that the heart is deceitful above all things. And now hear me out tonight as I preach to you because, yes, we got to share this negative thing about the heart, but my, my goal tonight is to talk about what God can do with that heart. Amen? Amen? What God can do with that heart because we cannot change that in our own ability. We cannot change that by our own strength, our own wisdom, or knowledge and understanding. There's nothing that we can do that can right that, that, that heart uh, that we were born with into this world, corrupted by sin and sinful things, we couldn't do it in our own ability. It took the power and the love of God to do it. This is the reason why that even though the Jews couldn't be right in the sight of God because they could keep all the law, they could obey the law to the letter, but it was still considered sinful in the sight of God because the law couldn't change their heart. It could, their heart was still stained with sin, and it took, and, and it really required, I should say, the blood of Jesus to wash it and make it clean. And so, hear how he described the unconverted heart. He said in verse 9, he said, it is deceitful above all things. Think about the seriousness of what the Bible is describing, the heart of a sinner, or someone who's not saved, or someone who have not allow Jesus to become the Lord of their life, he said that person's heart is very deceitful. Meaning it's very dishonest. It's, a, it's very insincere. It's very misleading. It's very, it's out of the way. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't if, you, if you take the time to sit down and, and search that person's heart and mind, boy, there is a well of ungodliness in there. He said also, he said the heart is deceitful above all things. And look at the second description that he gave us. He said, and it is desperately wicked. Desperately wicked. Not just wicked, but desperately wicked or severely evil or morally wrong. This is the heart that we were born with. This is the heart that every man and every woman came into this world with. I got two little children, and, and though they, be, they may be, they be innocent in so many ways, as they grow, you will see that little, you will see that, that nature <laughs> of sin coming out. Amen? Rebellion. They will start saying no. They will start rebelling at a very young age because it is the heart at work. It starts very young, and then you grow up and you get into that teenage years, and it just... Uh, uh, exacerbate and just get worse and, and then from then on it goes on and on and, and if, it's not, if it's not brought under control or change then you end up getting to an old age or you get up to where you're 60, 70, 80, 90 years old and you still have that unconverted heart still, still unsatisfied with life and cannot really have any peace and happiness and everything because you have never allowed God to change your heart. Amen. You never allow God to change your heart. And so tonight I'm preaching about he changed me. This was my heart. This is your heart. Before you got saved. It was deceitful above all things. And desperately wicked. And the Bible also has a question. He said who can know it. Or who can fully understand it. Sometimes you wonder why. People do things even though they may seem like a nice wonderful person. Yet there are some very dark things in their life. 
And you say, well, how can they do that? Or how can they do this? It is because their heart, as the Bible describes it, is deceitful and desperately wicked. And who can know it? And then in verse 10, look at what God said. In verse 10, I read verse 9. He said, the heart is deceitful above all things and desperately wicked. Who can know it? In verse 10, he said, I, the Lord, search the heart. Amen. He said, I, the Lord, search the heart. I try the reins, even to give every man according to his ways and according to the fruit of his lips. And so the Bible is describing the heart of an unconverted, unconverted person or a person who is not saved or a person who have never repented of their sins and given their life to Jesus. And he tells us that God knows that heart. Nobody else may, may, may know about it. Our siblings may not, may not know about it. In some cases, a husband may not know about it, or a wife may not, may not know about it, or maybe your friends may not know about it, or co-workers, whatever it is. But he said God knows about it. God knows the depth and the secrets of the heart. And so when he searched the heart, he saw how terrible it was. And so throughout the scripture, you will see that the thing that he appealed the most to when it comes to humanity is he appeals to the heart of man. He said in, in Proverbs 23, verse 26, he said, My son, give me thine heart and let thine eyes observe my ways. God said, give control, give me your heart or give me control of your heart because God knows it. He understands it. He knows what, how to fix it. He knows how to clean it up. He knows how to come into somebody's life and take away all those years and years and years of sin and wickedness and all those things that have been building up. God knows how to come in there and with a, with a drop of the blood of Jesus, wash it and make it clean. Amen? He knows how to come in there and transform someone's life. He knows how to come into somebody's heart and just fix it it make it to where it can start working right and so he plead to us he said my son give me your heart give me your heart let me change it let me take control of it let me fix it you said well my mind is all messed up it's not working right i have all these things that go through my my heart and my mind and everything how can i get it under control god said give it to me and i will fix it god said you give it to me and i will purify it God said, you give it to me and I will clean it up. God said, you give it to me and I will wash it and I will take it and I will make it a brand new heart. He said, I will take away that stony heart and I will replace it with a heart of flesh and I will write my laws into it and you can now praise and give glory to God. And like I opened the service, I said, this message is about giving God praise. Thank God that he changed my life. Amen. Thank God that he changed your life tonight, that that heart that was so deceptful and so wicked, it can be pure and clean and holy and righteous all by the power and the blood of Jesus Christ. Aren't you glad tonight? Amen. There is an answer. There is an answer. He said in, 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 in Proverbs 4.23, he said, Keep thy heart with all diligence. For out of it are the issues of life. So when God speaks of the heart, like I said, he's talking about the mind, the seat of your intellect, everything to do with your innermost being. He said you have to protect that thing. Amen. You have to protect it because uh, he said everything about your life comes from there. You know, Jesus said out of the abundance of the heart, he said the mouth will speak. So this is how you know if somebody have faith or if they don't have faith. This is how you know if, 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 if all you say is doubtful things and negative things and discouraging things, then it tells you what's in your heart, right? If you speak words of faith and words of comfort and words of positive things, then you know what's in your heart because it's coming out, amen? If, if you know, anger, bitterness and all this stuff comes out, then it's in there. And, 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 and if, it's, if, if all those things are coming out of your mouth when you speak, jealousy, dissatisfaction, envy, bitterness, and all these things, it is because that heart is still unconverted. That heart is still deceitful. That heart of yours is still wicked, and it needs some help. Amen? And the only one that can help and fix their heart is Jesus Christ. 
He said, God searched the heart. He knows uh, what goes on in the heart. And he can help you tonight if you will turn to him. If you will understand or try to understand what I'm saying to you tonight. That God can fix your heart. God can change it. God can give you a heart uh, that you're pleased with tonight. God can take away that wicked heart and give you a pure one. God can change. He can transform you by the power of God. When King David sinned and his heart was troubled and he couldn't find peace in his soul and he couldn't find what he was looking for, he was troubled on every side. And so he began to cry to God. And one of the things he said was, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. He was crying out to God, asking God to give him a clean heart. I'm here to tell you tonight, God can give you a clean heart. Amen. God can wash away sins, wash away pride, wash away doubts, fearful things, negative things. God can take it all out of your life. He can replace it. Oh, how do you know the preacher? He did it for me. Amen. And the message I'm preaching about is he changed me. I am a voice. I'm a testimony to night that God can and God will change the hearts of men and women if they will just give him a chance. If they will just give him a chance, he can change them completely. Amen? Praise God tonight for a change. You see, this is what God had to work with. He had to work with a deceitful and wicked heart. The Bible said there is none good, no, not one. And in the scripture, it tells us that all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Showing us that every one of us came into this world messed up. Amen. From birth we were messed up. And so a change was necessary. I needed to be born again. I need to change. I need a change that, that needed to take place on the inside. And that's what God did for me. And that's my testimony tonight. He changed me. Amen. God changed me. What a wonderful thing. Folks, let me tell you tonight. If you don't know exactly what I'm talking about, then I'm, I, I, my, my advice to you, my exhortation to you, my encouragement to you is turn it all over to Jesus. Turn it all over to Jesus. You will never regret it. Like I said, I got saved in 1998. I have no regrets. a matter of fact, I just look forward every day to draw closer and closer to God. I look forward every day to become better. And I'm not saying I'm perfect, but God changed me. Amen. He God genuinely changed my life. He took that wicked, unconverted heart out of me and he replaced it however he does it. He is the great physician. I don't know all the operation of it. I don't know exactly how he did it, but I do know this thing. And this is the fact God changed me. Amen. He changed my wicked and deceitful heart like, an, like working on an engine. He rebuilt it. He made it to where it can work right. He turned my heart of stone, like I said, into, into a heart that is soft and tender before him. And he wrote his laws in my heart. And now I can testify to anyone who will listen that God changed me. God changed me. He can change you tonight. He said, preacher, I'm kind of understanding what you're saying, but I don't have the faith and the confidence to believe that God can do this for me. Well, hear my exhortation to you. Yes, he can. And yes, he will. He said, well, you don't know what kind of life uh, I've lived and what kind of things that I've done in my life. Well, the Bible said that's just the product of your sinful heart. You're just living out what was in you. It was coming out to the surface. But I'm here to tell you, I've been there, and I've been a sinner, and I've been wicked in the sight of God. Man, there were times in my life, I'm not bragging, I'm just sharing a fact, where I made fun of the God that I now served. There are times in my life when I spoke ill about the things of God. But in spite of all that, He had mercy on me. In spite of all that, He reached out to me and showed me that He can do something in my life. In, 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 in spite of all that I have done in my life and sin, God still loved me. And he still gave me an opportunity to come to him. And so my, what I'm saying, he changed me. He, he made me a brand new person. Listen to what the Bible teaches us in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 17. He said, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. 
Old things are patched away. Behold, all things are become new. That's something to shout about tonight. Amen. Amen. That's something to get excited about. I'm talking about praising God. God changed me. I was a sinner. I was lost. I was on my way to hell. But when Jesus came into my life, the scripture said, he made me a brand new person. Right? He changed my life completely. 100% change transformed by his power very little on my own yes i do what the bible teach me to do i obey the scripture and everything but it's all the working of the power of the holy ghost like i said how many of us try to change our life we tried new year's resolutions we tried this we tried that this diet that diet this exercise program this uh, um Whatever it is, or we're going to make this change, we're going to make that change, and it only lasts for so long. But I'm here to tell you, when Jesus comes in, when we invite Christ into our life, He comes in, He makes us brand new, amen? He just don't put a facade on or, or put a new, a new coat on or whatever. He transforms us from the inside out. He take away that old sinful heart, as the Bible described, that deceitful heart, that desperately wicked heart, and He turn it into a heart heart that is pure, a heart that is righteous, a heart that is good, a heart that wants to do things that are right and pleasing to God and to man. Amen. God is able to change us and he changed me completely. And tonight I'm talking about God can change you also. Yes, he changed me, but he's not done yet. <laughs> he's still working on me. Amen. I'm not perfect. But I am changed. Amen. I'm not 100% complete. But God is still working on me. He's still making me better. In 2 Corinthians chapter 3 verse 17 and 18. Listen to what the Bible said. He said, now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. What does that mean is that a lot of times people want to change. People want their life to get better. But they are so bound by different things. They have all these vice, all these things that hold them back, chains, if you will, spiritual chains that keep them bound to where they can't break free. And so it's hard for them to break free from certain things. But listen to what the Bible said. He said, now the Lord is that spirit. And where the spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. When you let God comes into your life, that's when freedom comes, right? If you let the Spirit of the Lord come into your heart, that's when freedom comes. He will give you the ability to break free from things. In verse 18, he said, But we all with open face or our natural face, beholding as in a glass or in a mirror the glory of the Lord, are changed into the same image from glory to glory, even as by the Spirit of the living God. What that means right there is that he's saying... That we as natural people with our natural face, when we look into the Bible, the Bible is like a mirror. And he said, when we look into that, the word of God, this mirror, he said, God doesn't show us ourselves necessarily. He will show us ourselves, but that's not the, the one that he, that he wants us to see. He said, we see, when we look at the Bible, we see Jesus. Amen. We see Jesus. He said, when you look into the word of God, he wants you to see Jesus. And when you see Jesus and how loving Jesus is and how holy Jesus is and how wonderful he is and how powerful he is and how great and merciful he is. He said, we then begin to change into that image. Amen. He changed me and he's keep changing me. He's making me more and more like him. Amen. And if there's someone that we want to become more like, let us be Jesus. He was full of love, full of grace, full of compassion. He cared about those who other people will turn their, their head or t turn their face away from. He cared about the, down, the downtrodden, the weak, the poor, the, the sickly. He cared about people. God loves people. And so he said, when we look into the word of God, we see Jesus. I always, always describe it this way. It's like the, the Snow White story. When she looked into the match, or when the when when the the queen, whoever it was the queen, evil stepmother, whatever it was, <laughs> when she looked into the mirror, when she said, "Mirror, mirror on the wall, who is the fairest of them all?" And instead of her seeing herself in the mirror, the mirror showed her the image of Snow White. And he said, "Well, you know, so she, 
the mirror was showing her who the true standard of beauty was. It was Snow White. He said, when we look into the Bible, the Bible does, yes, it will show us ourselves. But really, the Bible wants us, it wants us to see Jesus. So we can focus on Jesus. And we can become more like Jesus. And so I'm preaching to income treatment. I'm preaching tonight about he changed me. I'm so glad God changed my life. And tonight, if you're listening to me and you're wondering, can I be changed too? Yes, God can change you. Can I receive mercy in my life? Yes, you can. Can God forgive you? Yes, he can. Can God take this deceitful, desperately wicked heart out of me? Yes, he can. Can God take that heart I was born with that is so deceitful above all things and desperately wicked and turn it into a heart that is wonderful and pleasing and, and a blessing to others? Yes, he can. Can God transform my life? Yes, he can. God can do it for you. Will God do it? The question is not will God do it. The question is will you let God do it? Will you give God a chance to change you? like he changed me, and like he changed millions of others. Will you give him a chance, or will you maintain or hold on to that unconverted heart that the Bible referred to as being deceitful above all things and desperately wicked? Will you keep that heart that you were born with, that wicked heart that leads to nothing but problems, problems in your own personal life, problems in your family life, Problems uh, with your peers, that heart that always wants to stir up strife and trouble and uh, all those things. Will you maintain and keep that heart? Or will you come to Jesus and say, Lord, I want you to change me too. Amen. And if you come to Jesus and ask him tonight, sincerely, believing first of all that he died for you, which he did. And that he rose again from the dead, which he did. And that he shed his blood and gave his life for you because he loved you. And if you will come to him and say, Lord, the scripture showed me what I was when I was born into this world. But the Bible also showed me that by your grace and mercy, I can have a brand new, clean, pure, loving heart. A heart that I am pleased to be the owner of. And Lord God, I want you... To forgive me of all my sins. And this is how you can pray if you don't know Jesus. And if you want God to change you like he changed me and many others. You can say, Lord Jesus, I know you died for me on the cross. I know you rose again from the dead. And I'm, I'm repenting of all my sins. I've seen truly who I was. Even though I thought I was good, yet you showed me that my heart was desperately wicked and deceitful. Very deceitful. And Lord God, I'm asking you, Lord, to come into that heart and wash it in your blood. Cleanse me, Lord Jesus, and change me and give me a brand new heart. Lord, I invite you into my life to become my personal Lord and Savior. And ask, oh God, that you will take control of my life. Fill me with faith and not fear. Fill me with hope and not despair. Fill me, Lord God, with joy and not sadness. Fill me with peace. Take away my anxiety and stress, O Lord God, and fill my heart with your love and peace. And Jesus will do it for you if you will just give him a chance tonight. God will do it for you. Father, I preach your word tonight. I thank you for changing my life. And I ask God tonight, whosoever will call upon you, Lord, that you will change them also and give them a brand new heart. Help them tonight, Lord, I pray. As she sing. Don't tune out yet. Spend some time in prayer. Listen to the song that she will sing about what the mercy of God has done for us. And consider your ways before the Lord. And give God a chance. Give God a chance. If not, you will remain with that wicked and deceitful heart all your life. And it will not end very good for you. Father, thank you in Jesus' name.
Praise the Lord. Appreciate the privilege of being here in the house of the Lord and preaching the message God laid on my heart for tonight. And I'm so thankful that God really changed my life. And I know everyone that gave their life to Jesus have the same testimony. God has been so good to us. And He's done so much in our life. And I pray that you all have a wonderful week. And we'll be here again Sunday morning, 9.30 pray you come worship with us and have a good time serving our God. Amen. Father, thank you for this time to be in your presence. I love you, Lord. And I'm grateful and thankful for everything that you've done in my life. Thank you for changing me, saving me, redeeming my life. And thank you, Lord God, for placing hope in my heart and peace and joy and all the things that make my life such a wonderful life. I give thanks to you tonight and praise. I owe it all to Jesus. And tonight, Lord God, hear my thanksgiving and my praise. I owe it all to you, Lord. Thank you for your grace and goodness. Keep your hand upon us and bring us back at the appointed time to worship and praise you. In Jesus' name, amen.